When you're looking at what gear you need to go sport walking, there are two basic categories, training and challenges. Now we're only looking at equipment today, not clothing or shoes, and within each category you'll have different needs and different options, so let's break things down a bit. For your weekday training walks, where you're just covering distances up to 10 kilometers in a session, you don't really need to take anything with you, unless you're at the very beginning of your journey and you need food or drink to get you through. The only piece of equipment that's worth taking for these sessions is a sports watch or your phone with an app on it to track your walk, so you've got a record of your distance and pace. It's when you go beyond 10 kilometers in training that you start to need some gear and supplies, so the first real level where kit is needed is 10 kilometers to half marathon distance, or let's say 25 kilometers. This is still a relatively short distance, but you will be out for between two and five hours depending on the actual route and terrain, so you'll need to carry some food and drink, a waterproof, and some really basic safety items. Most mountain days would fit into this distance range, but we'll deal with gear for those later. This is the gear you should take if you're walking this sort of distance on relatively benign lowland trails. First up, you'll need a vest or a rucksack with a minimum of five liters capacity. It really doesn't matter what you use for this, as it's essentially just training. But as a part of your training, you do want to try and replicate how you'll function during a challenge. So it is a really good idea to use a vest if you can, and to have pouches on the front straps to carry some fluids and fuel. For distances of up to 25 kilometers, you'll need probably no more than one liter of electrolyte fluid, split over two 500 milliliter soft flasks. Or if it's just 15 kilometers or so, you can probably make do with two 250 ml soft flasks. For fuel, take two high energy bars, something like Chia Charge or another kind of easy to digest bar. You might not need two bars, but it's always better to bring something back than to wish you had more. In the body of your vest or pack, take your lightweight waterproof to give you a bit of protection if it rains. But don't worry too much about being a really robust coat, as you're unlikely to find yourself in a survival situation. The other things you should take for this distance are your mobile, both for communication or maybe to track your walk if you use a phone app for that, a payment card in a small plastic wallet if you're walking somewhere a long way from home, a very basic first aid kit with a few dressings for blisters or cuts, several packs of individual antiseptic wipes which are lighter than a tube of cream and a pair of tick tweezers. You can take other items if you want, but these will be the bare minimum as a safety net, and they won't add massively to the weight you're carrying. I also take one of those small foil blankets you often get in goodie bags from races. They weigh practically nothing, and it does give you a little reassurance in case you need to wait for help. Finally, I always carry an empty sandwich bag for, how can I put this, accommodating used wipes should I suddenly find the need to urgently dash into the bushes. There you go. I've said it. When you start to go longer than 25k, the things you should take don't actually change a huge amount from this base point. You just add some more items and increase quantities of fuel and drink. It's not important whether it's a marathon distance or 100k. What you want to take will stay pretty much the same. Firstly, you'll need a bit of a bigger vest. Or if you took the plunge and got yourself a 10 to 15 litre vest the first time around, that'll be fine. You won't need more than a 15 litre volume for a 100k challenge, so you can work with just one vest for all your activities if you want. It's a good idea to add a pair of light, compact over trousers to your waterproofs, so you've got full coverage if you need it, and some kind of lightweight fleece or insulating layer if it's possible that you could find yourself going into the night or that it might get cold. Generally, I take a thin skull cap and a couple of buffs, either to use for warmth or to soak in a stream to cool down if it's hot. It's also a very good idea to place any spare clothing in a lightweight dry bag so it's well protected. Food and drink wise, if you're doing a challenge event, there will be opportunities to access water, so you just need to take some additional electrolyte tablets or powders to replenish stocks, and always go with a minimum of two 500ml soft flasks. If you have a bladder and your vest can accommodate it, the combination of a bladder and soft flask should be enough for about 40 kilometers. But just bear in mind, you'll be carrying more weight, so it's a question of whether you want to stop and refill more often, or go longer and carry more weight initially. You also want to take some extra supplies in your first aid kit. So pack some additional sachets of antiseptic wipes, more plasters, and in addition, some specialist blister patches. 
It's also worth taking some hand gel painkillers and diarrhea tablets, but be very wary of taking ibuprofen when you're on a long challenge, especially if it's hot, as ibuprofen can block your body's ability to absorb electrolytes. Some kind of sting relief is another good idea, as is one of those travel sashes of Factor 50 sun cream as a backup. The key upgrade to my emergency safety kit for these distances is to carry a lightweight foil survival bag, replacing the foil blanket I take for shorter walks. I'd also make sure the vest has a whistle built into one of the fittings, as is often the case nowadays, and if not, I'd take a whistle as well. You should take a head torch when you're going on longer challenges, even if you're not planning on going into the night. It's one of those compulsory items for many ultras, and it's better to have one with you than not. If you're going for 100k or more, and definitely going into the night, then you should also take some spare batteries. It's a good idea always to keep all of the batteries separate to the torch, and then just put them in shortly before it gets dark, to minimise the chance of the light switching on accidentally in your pack. Talking of switching things on, if you're going long, it's really important to ensure your devices have enough power so taking a small power bank is another really good idea. Most sport watches can be charged while recording, so you can top up the battery life and be sure to have the whole route to stick on Strava, but it's really your phone that's the essential thing, especially if you're walking alone. If you're heading into the mountains, regardless of distance, there are some additional safety factors to consider with gear. You'll want to have a vest or pack with a little more capacity, probably around 20 to 25 litres so you can accommodate more cumbersome waterproofs and emergency supplies. Remember though, this is still sport walking and we're talking about the kind of walking that's more like fell running than traditional mountain walking, so going with stripped back kit is fine, if you know what you're doing and have some experience in the mountains. If that's not you, then get some knowledge and experience first before you go sport walking in the mountains. When I go in the mountains, I take pretty much everything I'd take for an ultra, but with the addition of full mountain grade waterproofs and a survival shelter. I'd also definitely take a fleece layer and have one of those super compact insulating gilets that packs down really small, but would add some really valuable warmth if I needed it. I'd also take some mountain gloves, spare warm socks and a full wool hat in addition to a skull cap. So there you have it, quite a modular setup. But even though some of these things might sound like you're carrying quite a lot, if you buy wisely and seek to minimise pack size and weight whenever you can, you won't find the load a burden to carry.